Greek one. Okay, so uh, obviously I would like to get rid of this. It's horrible. Uh, then I would like to say that if um, if I have this timer running, yes, I can control my timer uh, by adding timeouts, and I kind of say, okay, add timeout, add timeout carelessly. Okay, once the time timer event happens, add timeout. Call me again. Call me again. Call me again. So instead, I can say, well, I really want to control this process by maybe going to the window and saying, how about I do this? Integer, uh, or actually maybe like a, a, a Boolean flag, am, uh, am, uh, uh, is um, animated, right? something like that, uh, then I will use, uh, the important thing is, as, as I begin to add those things, uh, the data to my own class, I must uh, follow the rule to, uh, I'll show those two now in parallel, right? I have my constructor, and it's here for a reason. I am going to say that, first of all, I need to initialize it to false and say, no, 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 animation is not active as soon as we start the application. Good enough, right? So the animation is not running. Then I, am, I can say that in my code, when the start button kicks in, I can say, oh, yeah, sure, they want to start the animation. So uh, is animated, I will instantly set it to true, right? So, and by the way, I need to remember that everything is now inside my window because this is a static function. It doesn't have instance. So everything needs to be prefixed by this M window, you know, is animated. Uh, just uh, I will discuss the syntax and, and the pointer to objects uh, in the next lecture. Okay, but this is how I access my data piece here. And then, of course, when I say button stop, I will say, okay, stop, right? Uh, just say false, right? So now, if someone clicks the stop button, I get this call back. I will just say, okay, I'm no longer, I no longer want to animate anything. And then, mm, over here, I will now not unconditionally add the timeout, but rather, I'm, I'm going to say if I'm animated, then, Sure, go ahead and repeat the timer event. So if the animation is active, then do this. Otherwise, don't do anything, and the animation will die out automatically because if the timer event is happen, you know, has happened, then you know, at some point, if animated is no longer there, then uh, the, uh, the timeout will no longer be added, and notifications will stop. Okay, so it's, it's just a simple way to control this. Also, I would like to, well, you know, I will quickly test this uh, by uh, running it, right? So, so I start the timer, the timer says timer, I say start again, the timer goes right back, and the timer is active. When I say stop, I say stop, oh, uh, where's... Uh, Interesting, this, this, uh, this um, thing uh, came back r sooner than I released the button and I got replaced. But uh, ultimately, when I press stop, the animation stop. Let's try this again. Stop timer. Uh, uh, stop. Uh, that didn't catch the first time. Stop again. Uh, so apparently, I pressed stop, but the animation was already... Uh, uh, let me say, let me s do this, uh, close this application and kind of clarify it. So, you see, I say timer even though the is animate is already turned off. So if I hide this call to indicate that timer is running, then this confusion will stop. Because the animation really stops 
but there's one more call back from the timer and it replaces it with this silly label so anyway so this will be this would fix the confusion because the timer still would show up after stop just once so anyway uh, then uh, what would be good if I had some sort of a counter right that would count maybe seconds so I can say uh, integer m count I'll just say count right as soon as I add another data piece to my class I have to remember to go to my constructor and say well I need to you know initialize it with something otherwise if I just create a window and never initialize this count inside my window no one's going to do this for me it will contain some garbage some horrible you know a random value so I must uh, use my constructor to say immediately as soon as I'm invoked set it to zero that's where I want to start then let's see perhaps as the timer event ticks in if we activated it then maybe now I'm going to kind of safely hide under you know check that we're animated so I'm going to say m count right so I can increment my count so I can each time it happens I inc oh again I need to remember to say window m count because um, s silly stuff right uh, I need to say uh, window count uh, because you know I have to deal with an object and a member variable inside that object so I need to remember to say it through this so again it's uh, to, to remove the confusion it's really you know this has higher precedence then increment so this resolves first and then the count is incremented by the increment operator so there's no need to use those parentheses but I use them to make sure that you see that um, you know it's really this this count inside the window that gets incremented next how do I print so instead of saying timer maybe I want to say I want to display the count all right so how how do we do this with a console application we use C out right it's very simple just send any integer any primitive data type to C out it'll instantly display it for you because it's all programmed to to generate output so uh, as soon as we lose C out because we, we no longer work with the console window right there's no 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 way to use C out we now need to reinvent C out and that's uh, you know some some people will say oh, okay I can write code that does everything in memory and I can convert you know um, integer to a something that looks like a string well why do this if we have something that's called um, and I will use this include at the top uh, you know typically system includes go before your own uh, header includes so I'm going to say include a um, couple of things I guess uh, system headers so uh, string string okay if I don't know if you if you remember this guy string stream from the uh, uh, standard library and also string because I'm converting from integer essentially to a string so those two headers stream uh, string stream and string right so string stream object will be replacing C out but it can be very easily converted to string and string can be very easily displayed as data uh, that we need so that's the trick so here's what we're going to do so once we increment the count we're going to say standard libraries uh, um, uh, string stream I think that's the name that we use and um, I typically call those things buffers right because they're like temporary buffers to work with now this so uh, I'm sorry buffer not buffers so buffer uh, buffer remember how we did it with C out uh, just write this right take your count and write it out as simple as that uh, then the buffer itself can be very easily converted to string so you can say buffer 
uh, buffer.str. The str member function of string string returns C++ string object back. But then, so then I will take this guy right here and pass it instead of my timer thing. So I will be actually printing the value of the counter already converted to, to a string. So see, this is standard, uh, not formatted output, right, which generates this. So let me, let me make sure I save this.